Hey everyone, welcome back to Zoo To You. This is Zookeeper Selena reporting live from the tropical forest on World Taper Day. Now those of you who are tropical forest fans know that the tapers are some of our favorite residents here at the tropical forest. We're currently on the habitat with Abby, the mother, who's on the right here, and Millie, her almost seven month old daughter, who's on the left. But today is World Taper Day, and for World Taper Day, we wanted to do a special Zoo To You talking about our taper friends who have lived here at Franklin Park Zoo for many, many years. Now, I don't know if you guys have been keeping tabs on us since last fall, but Millie was actually an arrival after a very long process full of lots of history. And today we're gonna tell that story. So, the first piece of that story is this guy. This is Milton. Check him out, pretty funny picture. But Milton was an extraordinary guy. He lived here at the tropical forest for years and years and was partnered up with Abby. And they actually had five kids. Five, did I count correctly? One, two, three, four kids before Millie arrived. Now Milton lived to the ripe old age of 30 years old, which is really about as old as tapers get. When Milton passed away in November of 2019, he was the oldest taper in zoos in the United States. Can you believe it? And he was a character and we miss him a lot. But the crazy thing that happened, Right before Milton passed away, he had been paired up with Abby. They had been together for a couple of months and we were hoping that they would make things work and have another calf. And we were so lucky because just a few months after Milton passed away, we found out via ultrasound with our vets and Abby that Abby was pregnant with not one, but two taper calves. Now this had never been reported in the wild or in zoos ever. I'm sure it's possible that it had happened in the wild and you know humans weren't around to see it but this was a big deal so we spent the next 13 months while abby was pregnant preparing for these twins we knew that it was going to be a complicated delivery it was going to be an interesting story our vets were working with a lot of other vets around the world and around massachusetts to figure out how we would get these calves out safely so then we ended up with these guys so millie is here on the right and this is her brother who unfortunately passed away so the story of the twins is extraordinary i'm shaking a little bit sorry the card's shaking on september 29th they were born late late in the evening we had noticed that abby had shown some signs of labor early in the morning but she wasn't progressing the babies were not coming out so we ended up with our vet team having to anesthetize abby and then our head vet manually helped her deliver these calves now I was standing right there when both of them were born and it was an event I will never forget. We watched them come out. Milton Jr., as we affectionately called him, came out first and he had this big white spot on his head and it was just like another Milton we knew who also had a big white spot on his head. And he was pretty quiet, pretty sleepy. They put him on the table, they woke him up, they said it's a boy and we thought, wow, we've got one. What a miracle. Then next came Miss Millie Tanya. Millie came out a little bit slower than Milton Jr. She was much quieter. She wasn't really breathing. We couldn't tell what was happening. And then all of a sudden the vet said, it's a girl and she's blinking. And it was one of the craziest days of my life. I have never experienced anything like it. Unfortunately, as you can see in this picture, the twins look like they're maybe in a little hospital. So about 24 hours after they were born, we started noticing here at the zoo that they weren't showing the same signs of health that we would see in a normal baby taper. Both of them were about 10 pounds, which the average baby taper is about 20 pounds. So they were pretty small and they were having a little interest in eating. At that point, we were bottle feeding them because Abby was still recovering herself from the delivery. And so our vets and our zookeepers decided to send them to the Tufts School of Veterinary Medicine, Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine. And so the twins went off in their crate and they were taken care of for over a month and a half by the brilliant doctors at Tufts. We are so grateful to these doctors. They've been able to come and see Millie here since she came back. And they really took care of these two around the clock. So about a month later, after they had started showing better signs, Millie was able to come back and she stayed here with us. Unfortunately, her brother just couldn't get over the hump. It was very, very difficult for him. And he ended up passing away about a month after he was born which was very, very sad for everyone, including the Tropical Forest staff, but also the staff at Tufts. They were really heartbroken. They had spent a lot of time taking care of these two. So to honor everybody, Milton, and of course our little boy, the 
staff at Tufts called the little male Thomas. That was what they named him when he got there. And they called this little girl Tanya. They went with a T alliteration, lots of taper alliteration. So when they arrived, when Millie arrived back, we had been thinking for a long time that we wanted to call them, if we got so lucky and got a boy and a girl, we wanted to name them after their father. So here at the zoo, we were calling the little man Milton Jr. or MJ, and we were calling her Millie. So now, in honor of both of the people, a sets of people who took care of them for so much through all their early stages, Millie's official name on record for the rest of her life is Millie Tanya. And the little man, he didn't get an official record, but we would call him Milton Thomas if he was here today. So that is the amazing story of the Taper Twins at Franklin Park Zoo, which always makes me a little teary-eyed, but it's a legacy, right? And that's what life is about. So let's see if we can wake up Miss Millie Tanya and talk a little bit about tapers in general. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them right in the chat. I've been talking a lot, but this is a story that means a lot to me. Like I said, this was one of the most amazing nights in my career. I will never forget it. So here we have some sweet potato, a little bit of carrot, and some banana, which is their favorite. And we'll see if we can wake them up. They're kind of lazy, as a lot of animals are. Your cat, your dog, a rat. Abby! You can see their ears twitching. These animals sleep a lot, so. Abby! Uh, there we go. So you can see Abby on the right. She's the mom. She's 18 years old, and she's been here a long time now, and she's raised five kids and birthed six, so amazing. And then in the back, her not-so-small companion, Millie! Millie Tanya, the taper twin legend. Millie was born weighing, like I said, 10 pounds, and she now weighs over 200 pounds at Franklin Park Zoo. And Abby is pushing 650 pounds. So these are big, giant animals. Come on, you guys, you want a snack? It's World Taper Day. They're, <laughs> they're very food motivated. They love bananas. You can see them working that funny nose. A lot of people think these guys are anteaters, but they're not. They eat mostly plants. In the wild, they'd be eating a lot of branches, leaves. Here at the zoo, they get their veggies. They also get a chow. So she's OK. So do we have any questions in the chat? Anybody want to know anything? We also have quite an audience here, so if anybody has a question, I'm happy to answer it. We're doing a Facebook Live, so you also will be live. Uh, any questions from the chat? Because about Millie's personality? Millie is a wild child. So when she arrived back from Tufts, we had to hand raise her for a while. We were unsure how Abby was going to respond after being separated from the calves for already a month. So Millie was raised by hand. We were here around the clock doing feedings for her, uh, making sure she kept gaining weight, making sure she stayed healthy. And once we put her together with Abby, we did it very slowly. We started just through mesh so that they could smell each other, and then we put them together in person. And we were so happy to see that they immediately took to each other. Millie was nursing within half a day, and everything was back to normal, and they've been together ever since. She's definitely a baby. She loves to zoom around still, even at 200 pounds. She, I don't know why this is, but she loves to lick things. So when we do training sessions and we work up close with them, she's always trying to lick you or chew your shirt, chew your shoelace. You know, she's always hungry. Uh, Abby is a very mellow lady. She's raised a lot of kids. You know, the moms at home know after the fifth kid, you're kind of, you know, you, you know what you're doing. Yeah. When was, if little Milton Jr. had lived, uh, would we ever have bred brothers or sister, or would it be an unrelated team? Oh, absolutely not. So the question was, if Milton Jr., Milton Thomas, had lived, would we have bred him with his sister? The tapers are actually part of a thing called a species survival plan, which makes recommendations for breeding based on a very intense system of genetics that is far beyond my understanding. So Milton and Millie would Millie will certainly probably do this. Milton, I don't know what would have happened, but they would have been paired with other tapers from around the country and started new families of their own at different zoos. So their older siblings, uh, Abby's actually a grandmother many times over. She's got grandchildren in Houston. She's got grandchildren in Virginia. Um, but we would never breed a brother and a sister. That's not really, that's not really conservation. On that note, we had a question on if they're endangered and if we can do anything to support them. 
They are endangered. So tapirs face a lot of dangers in their native habitat of Central America because of deforestation and habitat loss. That's a pretty universal problem around the earth. A lot of animals are losing their natural range because humans are joining more and more of the planet. So how can you support tapirs? You can come to the Franklin Park Zoo and meet our amazing tapirs. Part of the, the funds from your ticket goes straight to conservation efforts here in Massachusetts and around the world that the zoo had partnered with. So that's an easy solution. Um, there are also lots of organizations that you can look up that do taper conservation projects abroad. So pull up your old friend Google and there's lots of different ways that you can help. Do the tapers like to be pet? They definitely love to be scratched. So one of the things that we do here at the zoo is behavioral training. Now behavioral training is specifically so that we can take better care of our animals here without having to anesthetize them, put them under, and obviously to make it an enjoyable experience for them. So one of the things that we do, and one of the things that actually allowed us to help Abby with her delivery, was training obviously through a barrier we never go in with these animals that's a very common misconception that we spend a lot of time in with our animals we do not we always interact with them through a barrier but one of the ways that is most reinforcing for abby so something that she loves that encourages her to do more behaviors or participate more in training is a scratch down so we'll use your classic car snow brush without the ice pick obviously just the brush part and if we rub it along the nape of her neck and around her jawline, she will collapse in ecstasy and allow us to do a lot of awesome things. Abby's actually working on voluntary blood draw with our vet techs and her trainers. So the trainers will scratch her with the brush, make sure she's comfortable, give her a lot of snacks, and then they've been working up towards getting blood from her. And it has worked a couple of times. It's obviously, you know, hit and miss, but it's an amazing training program. I'm gonna double up here because they're kind of related. Mm -hmm. Again, and how many years apart do you know were her other calves? I, so the question was, how many years apart were the other calves and will she be bred again? So Milton passed away, so we don't have any males here at Franklin Park. I am not in charge of the species survival plan, so I don't know what the plan is for Abby. She's already 18 years old, which is heading towards, you know, the second half of her life. And obviously this birth with the twins was a heavy duty situation. So I don't know what they're going to recommend for her. Um, whether Millie will move to another zoo, Abby move to another zoo, that is in the hands of our species coordinator and, and not me. So I don't know the answer to that question. The other question was how far apart are the calves? I don't know the answer to that one either. Our last calf, Ishelle, was born here on New Year's Eve of, or New Year's Day of 2018, 2018. Um, they have a pretty quick dispersal rate, which means at the age in the wild in which the calf would leave the parents. So Ishelle actually moved, I think even before her first birthday, she moved to the Audubon Zoo. And she's paired up with a handsome guy named Tybalt down there. And I think they might be romancing as we speak. So I don't know exactly how long uh, between the other ones. I've only been here since Ishelle, a little bit after Ishelle was born. So I'd have to ask some of my more expert coworkers. Abby, this is the last piece. I think we have time for two more. So, first one is, do you think Abby realized that she had a child? So, when the ch kids were born, they were placed opposite Abby because, like I said, she needed to recover. Um, they were placed through a mesh barrier so they could see each other, they could smell each other. We were waiting to see if we would be able to introduce them. So, obviously, she knew at one point that there were two. But when they left, I don't know that Abby necessarily had any sense that they were specifically gone. She had never interacted with them in person. And when, Willie, when Millie came back, she was very, very happy to have her back. Like I said, they were nursing immediately. They've had a great relationship ever since. They're obviously together very peacefully. So I can't pretend to know what's going on in Abby's head. Um, but I will say that when her previous children have left in the past, like when Michelle left, we didn't see any signs of abnormal behavior or stress that might indicate to us that Abby felt something about the children leaving. So I don't know if she misses Milton Thomas. I know I miss Milton Thomas. But here at the zoo, we try not to guess what our animals are thinking. You know, we take the signs that we see from their behavior, and that's what we base our observations on. All right. Um, and Martha was wondering if they're related to pigs. Uh, no, these guys are actually related. The question was, are they related to pigs? Their closest relatives are rhinos and horses. So a lot of the vets, when they were trying to come up with answers to, you know, the twin situation and how are we going to manage this, 
a lot of the research that they did was also into horses. So that was a helpful sort of connection. Take one more, one more they, question. Do they have an indoor pool? They do have an indoor pool. I don't know if you can see it here. So they have this little pool. Somebody, probably named Millie Tanya, has dumped a bunch of hay into the pool. They are pretty good swimmers. So these guys actually have an indoor exhibit in the tropical forest and then an outdoor exhibit outside the tropical forest. So now that it's getting warmer out, you might see them out there. They like to swim. They use that trunk as a little snorkel, so it helps them to swim pretty far. And Millie has definitely been getting better at it. We started obviously with a much lower pool to get her used to it. Her friends at Tufts actually, when she was starting to improve and heading towards back here, they started to give her more bath time, more water play. So everybody worked together to make sure that even though she started her life out in the hospital, she was ready to go straight onto the habitat. And obviously it has worked very well. Look at that giant thing. The thing that is most uh, heartbreaking to me is that these guys are actually born with these little watermelon stripes. And you can see that Millie has almost completely lost her stripes. So that's one of the you parents out there know. Sometimes you see your kid doing something, you think, oh my gosh, they're so grown up. I look at Millie and I think, my goodness, where was that baby that we were bottle feeding so, so few months ago? So she'll be seven months this upcoming Thursday. And now they're really cruising around. Looks like Abby's going to go back to the bed. It's her favorite activity. Up. All right. Else you I just want to say thank you to all our zoo fans who were supporting us throughout the whole baby boom in October. It was a big year for us in 2020, and we are so glad to be able to have you back and to share these guys with us. In honor of Milton Thomas Jr., Milton Sr., Miss Millie, and Abby, we wish you a happy World Taper Day, and keep tuned in at Zoo2U. I am Zookeeper Selena, signing off.